You've probably heard of different diet options to help people lose fat. The Zone Diet, Keto Diet, Atkins Diet, and many more. You may be wondering three things. First, does a diet consistently create weight loss day after day? Second, does a diet actually help you lose fat? Or just lose weight through muscle loss? Third, does a diet operate differently depending on your sex or other personal traits? These three questions need to be answered before we recommend diet options. In measurement, where we assign numbers to people to represent their abilities or attributes through different tests, we need to answer three similar questions. First, is a test taker's score on one question consistent with their scores on other questions of similar difficulty level? Second, do the test scores actually represent the attributes that we intend to measure? And are the test scores used appropriately? And last, are the responses to the test questions unduly affected by test takers' genders, ethnicities, or other personal characteristics beyond the attribute we are trying to measure? These three questions represent three important concepts in measurement, reliability, validity, and fairness. Welcome to the annual Digital Dance Contest. As usual, the first place will be directly admitted into a formal dance program. This year, we asked contestants to play the world's favorite dance video game, Dance World, to get a score. It's a fun game where people dance in front of the screen, matching the postures the game designed for each beat in each song. Through a tracking device, the system assigns each contestant a score based on how well their posture matches the correct posture in the system at each beat and each contestant gets a summated score after a song ends. Sounds like a fair game, right? But contestant Sarah has a different opinion. First, in the practice session, Sarah gets a higher score than William on the song Keep In Touch by J.D. McCrary. But William got a higher summated score than her on the same song in the real contest. Second, she doesn't believe that a good score in the game suggests a higher dance ability. Last, she complained about one specific move related to one beat, which she wasn't able to get a good score on because it requires a taller body to reach a certain distance. Those questions she had could all come down under an overarching question. Do contestants' scores reflect their true dance ability? How can we confirm that? A difficult part of measurement is that we are never able to definitively confirm that we have found the truth through measurement. What does this mean? For Sarah, we saw that she did not get the same score in the contest as in the practice session. And it's very likely that she won't get the exact same score every time on the same song. That is the reality. We want to obtain the truth of her danceability. But what we get is truth plus some irrelevant variations induced by factors, including the degree to which she is tired, the degree to which some factors from the outside environment impacted her dancing, and so on. We don't want irrelevant variations, and we can find ways to minimize them. But there will always be some irrelevant variations present. We can therefore assume that Sarah's dance scores will vary a little from one dance to another, bouncing around her true dancing ability score. The degree to which her dance scores represent her true dancing ability is considered the term reliability. If test scores have high reliability, it provides necessary but not sufficient evidence on the other term you often hear, validity. For validity, we need to ask ourselves two questions. First, what evidence do I have that Sarah's scores represent her dance ability? If her scores were consistent with little variations in them, but they actually represent her ability to manipulate the computer game through just matching the ending postures at each beat, but not actually dancing, then we would have reliable scores, but no evidence that we can call them dance scores. Similarly, a core question of validity for a math test is whether or not the test's scores can be called mathability. 
Second, what evidence do I have that Sarah's scores can be used to admit her into a formal dance program? I may have reliable scores for her that I can justify as calling her dance ability, but if there is little relationship between dance ability and dance world, and dance ability needed to do well in a formal dance program, then the use of this test would lack validity evidence. Similarly, if we plan to use math test scores to make some decisions about students or their teachers, we need evidence that the test use is valid. Can the math scores predict well who will succeed in gifted math programs? If yes, we may have some evidence towards the validity of using the math scores to decide who gets admitted into those programs. And underlying both concepts of reliability and validity is fairness. Once again, we need evidence that the interpretations of test scores, such as calling Sarah's score her dance ability, and the use of test scores, such as using Sarah's test score to admit her into a formal dance program, is fair to different groups of test takers. If Dance World consistently gives slightly higher scores to taller persons, even if they have the same dance ability as their shorter friends, then we have a fairness problem. We can't fairly call the scores dance ability as they actually represent both dance ability and height. As well, we can't then fairly use scores to admit persons to formal dance programs because taller persons will be erroneously advantaged. Returning to our math test, we must have evidence that scores represent math ability and nothing else. And we particularly must make sure that this is true across all groups of test takers. Otherwise, the things we do with the test scores will be unfair. While you may have heard that life is never fair, we don't believe that in measurement. We always strive for fairness.